Welcome to Beyond Podcast. I'm your host, Anthony Petralis, and we are super excited for today's guest. I mean, I got to tell you this story because it is a great story, this kid sitting here, and I, you know, I, and I respect it a lot, the point that I'm going to be trying to make here. So I'm covering Malden High School versus Revere High School, and it's Malden High School football senior night. And there's a million kids that are walking around with cameras on both sides. And I can't tell who's with Medford and who's with, I mean, Medford, sorry, who's with Malden and who's with Revere. Um, but this kid approaches me that you see on the screen here, if you're watching, and he starts shouting out and shooting his shot, dude, like telling me he's the most ruthless, like Mike Tyson and how, how good he is at track and field and how good Revere high school is at track and field and kind of like shot his shot and talked about the podcast. He walked away and I'm like, I got to fact check this kid a little bit. I want to find out who he is a little bit. Did a little bit of homework and a little conversation chatting with them. And we got ourselves a stud here. We got ourselves. He he shot a shot and he backs it up a little bit with what he does. Um, again, I could be a little bit off. So correct me at any point. You could fact check me. Um, but, you know, runs a lot of different events in track and field, but specifically the one mile, the 800, the 400 and the 5K. We're going to talk about the 5K. He just qualified at state. He told me before here that he didn't totally step on the gas pedal here. And so it's interesting. We'll talk about that strategy going into all states which is happening this saturday at fort devers i'm reading off the paper here at 115 start time there's 259 kids and right now he sees himself about the top 30 of those 259 kids so i told you this guy's got confidence man but he backs it up and that's what i love about him uh so senior revere high school uh our guy Eunice shaheed welcome to be on podcast my man thank you thank you thank you it's a pleasure to be here how was the introduction? I mean, was I pretty spot on and how we kind of met each other? That was a great introduction. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you approached me at the game, dude, and you kind of like you were pretty adamant about it. And I liked it. And you were like, I was like, all right, I'll check you out for real. Like, I will check you out. And and here we are. You reached out to me. I told you to. I said, you know, sometimes I get busy and I don't forget about you, but I kind of forget about you because it's just the million other things that are happening. But reach back out to me, communicate with me. And he did. And here we are. So um, it was awesome to meet you. And then kind of chit chatting with you a little bit and learning a little bit about you as a person, man. I think somebody put us together for a reason we were meant to meet each other that night and i mean that and i think this is a great story we're going to be talking a little bit about you today but track and field i said to you off here you are the first track and field star we've had on this podcast which is awesome so it's an honor and you will always be on the wall of fame forever it could be a trivia question five years down the road who is the first ever track and field star and it is you my friend so um that that is an honor to have but you know track is different like i, I almost put track and football somewhat together in this category in the sense that and even track, because I don't think there is much opportunity of running track in the youth level, whether that's elementary or or middle school. I know there's things available, but there, it's not as common as I like pop water. Right. But I put those two sports in the same category because of the fact that like. There isn't a lot like most of those sports are picked up in high school when you get to high school. And most of it is because you're either really fast or really strong or just really athletic and you don't play like a spring sport or a winter sport. And you usually jump on to do that uh, for, for that reason. But, you know, in those sometimes those athletes discover that track and field is actually the best sport that they, they in their lives. Like they're, that's the best what they're best at. And you don't realize and you start doing that. You and I talked a little bit. You were kind of a football player growing up. So, yeah, just talk a little bit about you know doing that and then how you kind of got into track and field from there well i started from a pop warner around fifth or fourth grade and it's just it's been a sport that i ever like i just love playing football playing with my friends during recess and then i played with them during recess and then i would see them go to practice and i just i just told my mom i just want to play some football she signed me up and i just it just it just became like a great a great love for me. I just loved playing football. What you the play? Ball. I'm guessing wide receiver, defensive back. No, I played running back. Oh, you played running back. Okay, yeah, okay, and tight wow, end. okay. Jeez, okay, all right, man. Okay, threw me off there. I might I might have been the smallest kid, but I just loved playing football. It was it was it was very very fun. Yeah, but then just 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 something brought me to track and field. It's just like it's it's like I was meant to run. Considering from my, my ethnicity, I'm a Moroccan and a lot of Moroccan runners, they're, they're just the, a lot of the best distance runners are all Moroccan. So it's just, it's just feel like I was put on this earth to run. And that's what I wanted to do. So I hear you say that. So it's like, 
track and field or the Olympics, like, are you following that specifically at all or anything like that? When you kind of say that, is that been an interest in your family as far as track and field, or is that something you just discovered as your interest for running grew? Oh, uh, well, my, my, from my dad's side, we have a lot of, we have a lot of runners, like my uncle, oh, okay. my, so it's my dad's family. cousins, they're all runners. Okay. My, my dad's uncle, his, his teammate, is actually a gold medalist in the 5k and the 1500 and holds the world record in the mile in 1500. Wow. So this is in your blood. Okay. This is awesome to hear that, that that's awesome to hear. So I continue. Sorry. I interrupted you. Yeah. Well, it's just, it's just going also going to Morocco to run. It's just, it's a phenomenal experience. There's, there's no way I can put it. Oof. When'd you go? When did you go there? I go every year. You go every year you run there? Wow, that's amazing. Okay. So you're you obviously you knew that you were kind of meant to run. Maybe opportunity didn't present itself, you know, in your youth level. You get to high school. I mean, you you run there every summer, you so on. Talk about the events that you're choosing. I mean, I look at the events, I see the one mile, I see the eight hundred, I see the five K four. I mean, four hundred, eight hundred is one lap, two lap. Okay. One mile, I think, is what? four laps is that what four a mile laps. is right and then a 5k i don't even know what that is but i mean that's a variation of of sprinting a whole lap around a track to really pacing yourself uh and so on and i mentioned that the 5k is kind of where you stood out so maybe talk about jumping into track and field in high school and choosing those events specifically and where you knew your strength was well it started with me just just it just it just it just happened so fast I was looking at my friend and the track was happening right next door. And I was like, dude, you think I should do track? And he was like, yes. And I was like, I don't have any shoes. He reached in his bag, gave me his basketball shoes and told me, go run. And I just, and I showed up, I told him, so uh, I feel like I could be a distance runner. He said, hop on the line. He made me do some laps. He knew I could be a runner. The next day he put me in an invitational first ever race. It was an invite. And I'm not even gonna lie. I got I got absolutely destroyed, but it was an amazing experience, like none other. When you say you get absolutely destroyed, what do you mean? Like talk about how many kids ran and where do you think you were? Like we ran the two mile, like I got put in a ten twenty heat. Like ten twenty was like the limit. I ran twelve minutes. Yeah. Okay. I got absolutely destroyed. But But man, that's raw though. That's raw. Like that would be like a quarterback going seven for like twenty four. But completing like two ridiculous passes, they're like, "Holy cow! Like this kid's pretty athletic, or this kid's whatever." Like for you to hop on there and what really be like a minute forty off of what like the kind of limit was, never doing that. I mean, at the moment, that probably didn't seem like anything to you. But as you probably look back at that now and seeing how much success you have, wasn't bad, dude. Wasn't bad. Yeah. Well. If if we were to look back and all these kids that I raced before, if I were to be put in that in that race again, I think I would absolutely destroy them. Like it wouldn't even be fair. So here's my question to you then. So where's that change, right? Because here you are walking on and doing it. Where did you a race like that happens? Where do you then kind of begin to focus your growth and track? And I ask this just because I've never, like I said, had an athlete on here before. So it's one thing when you are playing it and doing it because it's just a sport that you're doing it versus someone who is, you know, very good at it and can compete at that next level collegiately at it. um, If they find their right event, they're able to train. So for you, where does the training now kick in for you when you do events like this? What are you doing in season, but most importantly, maybe off season, to kind of get better and stronger like you have well mostly off season it's just it's just a lot of a lot of miles that i've been i've been putting in a lot of bike rides a lot of swimming it's just it's just it's just discipline you got to tell yourself this is what you got to do and say i got to execute it and if you want to do good at this rate you got to do this 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 and that and it's just it's just mileage continue miles and miles and miles and miles workouts 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 hills and hills and hills it's just it's just you got to do those just to be better now one interesting thing about you that we kind of talked about you at a youth level playing football specifically um is that and and i and i think it was your sophomore year in high school you actually had kind of a rare heart disease so a lot of that maybe physical contact or things that you were doing before 
you now can't really do anymore. So that also kind of altered into maybe the change of also jumping in the track a little bit. But Wolf Parkinson syndrome, um, you had mentioned it to me a little bit. Um, talk talk a little bit about that as a young person because here you are, this young kid, athletic, playing sports, loving it. It's everything about you, and you no, know, then all of a sudden you get news that isn't great, and as a result of that, you. You know, mentally, that's that that's a lot too as a young kid. So you know, kids struggle with things mentally a lot and don't always talk about it. But uh, you know, talk about something like this for you and how maybe it affected you and and you were able to obviously here you are doing track. It led you to something else, but it had to be a tough time too with that. Yeah, not everybody everybody thinks about it in the physical aspect, but nobody actually thinks about it in the mental aspect. Sitting there in the hospital for days and days and days, and just seeing all of your buddies do the sport they love is just it's it's a lot for somebody that young and it's just i had to tell myself just to deal with it because there was no i didn't i didn't want to talk about it with anybody because i didn't know how to talk about it so i just kind of had to bottle like put it all in and just move forward and that's something that i don't really talk about with a lot of people yeah and I get that, you know, and I think that that is something, especially in athletics nowadays, you know, the mental aspect of things. I mean, student athletes are student athletes, a lot of stuff that's going on in school and their personal lives and everything else that does affect, you know, as much as you try to block it out or zone it out, it's there, right? So, um, you know, that's always a tough part in athletes. And I always interested in people battling that because that's sometimes you learn a lot about who the person is, let alone not just the athlete and how they're competing, but just who is the person that you are dealing with and who they are. And I think that that's great uh, when you have people in your program that uh, can, can, can show that in a really positive way. Now let's talk about this invitational. You had said to me last week that you ran an estate meet and you finished somewhere in the thirties and, but you were okay with it. You said you were very conservative and you kind of decided not to really step on the gas pedal. I don't know track particularly well. I have heard that before. I've heard people say that they didn't run as hard in a race or they tried different things in a race or just kind of wanted to see themselves in certain parts of the race and what their times were. When you talk about that, is that a strategy for yourself that you've come up with that you and your coach discuss? Like, how does that go into play that you are not just going out there and trying to be like, I want to win this thing and then I want to go win all states too? I mean, talk about that strategy a little bit. My initial, my initial strategy was to go out hard, just dominate the entire field, try to see if I can win. But I came up with the strategy just to sit and wait right before the right before the gun went off. I told myself, what if I play conservative and and I just sit back, relax, enjoy the race, and just when there's a mile left, kick it in, push the pedal, and just get myself right there in that top position to qualify. And that's what I did. And that's great. So now, you know, you're probably running against a lot of those same people or newer people that you haven't quite seen or that you don't quite, uh, you know, that don't haven't quite seen who you are yet, maybe out of league or different part of the state that you're now running against. I mean, for you, you mentioned to me off here, I said here, you know, top 30 that you kind of feel like time wise and what you're seeing and so on is where you're at. Uh, I mean, talk about a race like this. this is your first type of race that you've done that's like this kind of at this level. Um, you know, and, and what are you expecting? What do you see in something like this? And, uh, yeah, just give us the, give us the lowdown here a little bit. Honestly, I'm just going to this race thinking to myself that I'm the best one to step on this field. I'm thinking to myself, I'm going to come back the next day with a state title. And, and I'm just, and I'm just reading, I'm looking through the articles and I'm seeing all the favorites and nobody knows who I am. And I want to go, and I want to show people who I am, and I want to bring home a state title. No Let's one go, dude. A state title. Let's go. I love that attitude, man. I loved how you approached me. You approached me at Malden, and it was the same exact swag you had, man. Like, I, this is who I am. I'm the one of the best in the state. You're going to know who I am. And I kind of we walked away, and I was kind of like half impressed and half like, Okay, kid, like, you know, like go get, go, go and get it, right? Um, and here you are saying that, and I love that. Let's talk about you, the athlete, when you're competing. Like right now, to me, you're kind of like a well-spoken, well-thought, you think before you say something type person, which I love. How does this translate to you, the athlete? Like I could see you just being like kind of like 
getting getting juiced up beforehand, listening to music, bopping around a little bit. But when you win, everyone knows you won. Like, am I somewhat on the right path there? Well, being on the track is just it's just people people see me as a as a, as a guy that uh, I think people see me as a guy who just has a huge ego. Uh, I don't know. It's just it's just. But let's say, so we have so we have a league called the Greater Boston League, and yep. and the distance kids like they're all like they're all like they don't talk, they don't do anything, and I stepped foot and I just started talking smack to literally everybody. Literally so what are you saw. saying? Talking smack. I mean, obviously censorship here, but like, what what are some things that you're saying? Like that you walk up and kids are like, what did you just say to me? <laughs> it's just, it's just, it's a, it's, a, it's a lot of things, really. It's just stepping on the line. They'll give you a fist bump, and they'll be like, "Good luck," and and I just won't say anything, and then I'll be like, "Good luck." You actually need it, and then it's just, it's just simple things like that, like seeing people in my league post a like, for example, uh, last year. I wasn't. I, I got. I got uh, kicked off my cross country team, and and this kid made a post at the championship, and he commented because he won. I commented on it. I was like, "You're lucky I was not there." And then going into indoor season, I finally raced him, and I just dominated him. It wasn't even fair. I just destroyed him completely. Okay. Okay. So let's talk about let's talk about that aspect of a little bit the mental aspect of it. Where do you draw from on that? Is that um, any athletes that come in mind that, that that you kind of think of when it comes to that, or uh, is that something you just learn maybe in the run game, noticing maybe there's just an advantage of having a little bit of a mental edge in, in, in running? There's this runner. He's he's one of the best, probably the best. His name is Jakob Ingerbritsen, and he talks the most smack out of anybody, and he backs it up. And even when he loses, he still talks smack, and that's the type of runner I want to be. Okay. I want to be able. I want to be able to talk smack no matter what, not having a care in the world because then I can back it up. I'll say you're slow, and then he still calls me slow, and then I just beat him. Okay. It's just, it's just, it's just simple as that. I want to be able to dominate the field while making it fun, because no, no one talks about distance. It's always sprinting, and always that. And I want to bring some fun to distance. Okay. So, you know, obviously you run indoor as well, right? You run indoor in the winter. I mean, that's kind of right around the corner, Reggie Lewis Arena. I mean, that is the Mecca. When I was in high school, I was running track meets there too. You meet everybody from all over the state. It is such a fun time. And people that I've met and had bonds with and have still kept in touch with from different schools over the years that you just like, my age now, you see people getting married or you see people having kids or buying houses or whatever. It's 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 amazing. Um but th- th- yeah, pl- plenty of great memories there. But um, talk about indoor season coming up. Obviously, mentality wise, it is a little different. You know, the the two that you're doing are different. But uh, that winter's coming up. I mean, talk about just the vibe there when you go to the place like that and compete. The vibe is just it's just it's just something else. It's like it's, it's like when you enter the air, like the 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 feeling, the feeling of seeing every single runner there, seeing everybody there. And just and just walking in, I just tell myself I'm the best, yeah. best, best out of all these runners. No one, no one can stop me. No one's better than me. And even if I lose, it's just it's just you gotta have confidence in yourself. Yeah, and I think that's really important. I mean, obviously, I think you know a lot of times we cover team sports, so I think there's an element of you know you have to have a certain mentality that you are a piece of the puzzle, and that if the puzzle pieces are all there and put together. You can form the whole piece. Um, it's different in running, though, because you are getting yourself up to compete against other people. It's you versus the world, you know, and you are competing against everybody else. So there is that aspect of the individual of how you get yourself psyched up, how you mentally get yourself psyched up, and how you maybe mentally mess with your opponents a little bit because – in in team sport, mass getting in someone's head can change the game completely. Like in an individual sport, getting in someone's head is just like you pulling somebody behind you, being like, "Yep, another one behind me. Yep, another one behind me," without even having to run the race. So, um, it's great to kind of hear that. I like confidence. I like people who walk into a room and say, "This is what I'm going to do, and this is how I'm going to do," and they do it. Or if they don't do it, they they go down fighting doing it, or they're close to doing it. And I think that there's a respect aspect that I have for that for sure. 
What type of music you listening to? We getting juiced up beforehand a little bit. Do you have an artist type of genre, or you kind of all over the place with that? Honestly, the thing that gets me like really, really going is like eighties, nineties rock music. Okay, wow, dude, you threw me there. You threw me there. Tell me. Yeah, it's just you know walking to school, coming home from school. Anytime that I have just a brief moment where I'm just walking, driving, doing anything, warming up. Running, running my miles, running my miles, rock music it just gets me going. Man, yeah, that's cool. Is there a specific band, specific song that 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 we could talk about here? Um, uh, like highway, to, highway to yeah, Ace, like Ace, dude, yeah, that's, highway to hell. Okay, yeah, that one just gets me going. I mean, ACDC. I feel like, man, like talk about like anytime I'm looking for a song like in that genre, it's like. Four or five of them, first four or five songs are ACDC. Maybe like Metallica and the Sandman is in there too, you know, but for the most part, it is ACDC across the board. I agree, man. Um, when 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 I coached, I was a coordinator in 08, we played at Gillette. And I mean, ACDC was all over the place, all over the place. Every time I was ACDC, it was awesome. Uh, Thunderstruck, you know, so. Yeah, Thunderstruck uh, is what gets me going. That's a big one, dude. That's, that's a monster one. Yeah. Um, but that's cool. I mean, I ask that question a lot because I, I truthfully never get the same answer. And then I would have never guessed 80s, 90s. I don't, kids your guys' age don't even mention music. That'd be like me mentioning, like, yeah, like music you listen to on Magic 106.7 that, like, you listen to in the dentist office when I was a kid. Like, I would never mention that. So that's awesome to hear you say that because that is a great genre of music for sure. You mentioned, obviously, you're pretty good at what you do running. Um, you know, we talked a little bit off ear, the aspect of taking that to the next level and playing collegiately. And we do have an audience of, uh, you know, kids that are 18 to 24 and even younger that listen that are in that process of recruitment or the idea of schools being interested in them. I mean, where are you in that process of schools reached out to you? And if so, how cool is that? I mean, that's your hard work accumulating, coming together, and and people being able to be, yeah, this, someone's interested in my skills. Cool. You know, just it's just what really gets me going is 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 like when just a bunch of people are just interested in what you do. People hitting you up saying, "How do I do this? How do I get faster? What's some workouts that I can do to get faster?" And other coaches coming up to you saying, "Great job, man! I seen your raise." Coaches calling your phone, emailing you saying, oh, I just saw your recent invite. Congrats, man. Congrats on the win. Congrats on the big PR. Can't wait to see what you do at States. Just that feeling is just is just phenomenal. And what I would tell to the kids is that never give up because I thought that no one would ever do that. I thought no one would ever reach out and no one would ever just, just hit me up and say, congrats, man. You just can't give up. You just have to have hope because it will it will come. It will come. Everything happens for a reason. Cool. That's I mean, I always ask the question about advice. I mean, talk about great advice right there. That is, you know, right? Things sometimes don't always, you don't always get to the path the way that you know, the spot that you thought you would. Sometimes it takes a different path or a different road to get there. So um, you know, everybody has their own different stories and journeys. And it's cool to see that you kind of got where you wanted to. And obviously the advice that you give, I think there is great. Um, you know, for you, like I met you at a at a game that I was covering from a videography aspect, and you were there covering for your high school. First of all, shout out Revere High School football team for beating Everett uh, a couple weeks Thank back. You. I think that that is, you know, that's worth saying. I mean, for years and years, I I grew up in the city of Medford. I didn't go to Medford High School, um, but I teach in Medford, and you know, everything football was Everett, 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 Everett as long as I can remember. Okay, and to hear that a team like and I saw. Saw you guys play against Malda. I think your quarterback is is very good. I think you coach well. Coach a coach. I think recently got his hundredth win. I think it might have been even that Malda game. He might have got his hundredth win. But yeah. um, you know, to come out that next week and to beat Everett and to shout them, uh, shut them out. Um, I know maybe they didn't get into the playoff um, like they wanted to, um, but it's a great way to kind of end that season going into the second half of your season a little bit and, be, and beating that squad. So, um, you know, shout out to them. I just want to say that, but I met you doing that. I mean, is that kind of who you are outside? Who are you a little bit outside the athlete, outside the runner, uh, as far as a student in person? 
yeah, videography and photography is something I just got into last year. And it's just amazing. It's just feeling like taking those videos, taking those taking those shots and then just seeing everybody post some, everybody tag you saying amazing photos, great photos, dude. It's just a great feeling. Yeah. I mean, that's something obviously around your track schedule, but I've said this is the students at Medford high school, just being a teacher and knowing some of these kids when I had them in school and we talk about it, I tell them like, you know what, talk to some of the athletes in winter sports and say, Hey, I'll come to this game and I'll cover you warm up in game, you know, go after someone that, you know, has a lot of highlights. Cause that's a great way of you then being able to show how you can individually cover athletes. I mean, I've been doing this for four years and man, I've seen so many people, students who did it for fun that now making little businesses of it and are growing themselves. So, you know, you're good at it. You're talented at it. You have an eye for it. And yeah. And just keep chasing it. It's kind of cool. What about school? What's a favorite subject of yours um, that that you that stands out to you or uh, that you enjoy? My favorite subject was AP chemistry. AP chemistry. All right, we got a smart guy here. I'm assuming. What's the GPA? GPA is probably around a three seven three eight. Dang. Okay, dude. So you're a smart, smart kid. Okay, A. I mean, dang. That was your favorite subject. Talk about that. It's it's it's. You, everybody looks at it when you say the, the favorite subject. Everybody looks about the teaching part, but no one thanks the actual teacher. My teacher was hands down the greatest teacher I have ever learned from. He actually who is this? Who is this? Let's shout him out here. His name is Alex Gilligan. Okay, he's an AP chemistry teacher at Revere High. One of the greatest, greatest teachers to ever step foot in Revere High School. He cares about his students like. Nobody else does. Phenomenal teacher. That's awesome. All right. So you've had this guy. How many years have you had this guy? One year. Just one year, dude. And just like that makes such a difference. And are you looking to pursue in, in college? What are you kind of looking to maybe pursue or take up? Pre-med course. Okay, man. It's okay. Yeah. So okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So you're a smart dude. You're a pretty smart dude. On top of that, you're a confident dude. And you bad you talk to talk and walk the walk a little bit. I dude, I'm liking you more and more as I talk to you. You're you are such an interesting person. Um are you an only child? Oh, do you have siblings? What tell you what's five your family siblings. like? Where are you in that five? Oldest one. Okay, so you're the alpha. You're the alpha. All right, that's cool. What are the ages? One is two, six, seven, eight, and ten. Dude, so you are the alpha. Like you are the alpha in the in the bunch then. Holy cow. So you have a full so you are you're probably helping out a lot at home and being that. Uh what what are some what are some things a, a teenage guy like you are doing taking care of helping younger siblings that most teenage guys probably are not doing, on top of being very good students, on top of being a very good athlete, you are probably a full time help your parents out as much as possible can type guy too, I'm sure. Beyond's when I watch them, it's just sometimes you just got to let them loose. You just got to let them do whatever <laughs> they want sometimes. Ain't that the truth, though? In all honesty, ain't that the truth? Sometimes you just got to get it out. You know what I mean? You're just They just, they just love fighting each other. That's, yeah. that's the main thing. That I was I just going to say, you're just room. a security guard, dude. That's all you are, really. They all they all do their sports. They're all like, some of them are fighters. Some of them do boxing. They all just love to fight each other. So I just Where do they box? Where do they box? Dumb. One of them does soccer, the girl. Okay. One, and the two youngest, uh, they haven't, I don't think one of them has even started walking yet. Yeah. <laughs> and then the two, two middle, they do soccer and uh, kickboxing. Okay. Very cool. So you guys are pretty active, athletic family. You and you guys, when you, you guys all go to Morocco, you guys all travel back together as a family, go there. Yeah. Oh my God. You guys must take up like a quarter of a plane. It's awesome. <laughs> um, that's really cool, man. And I mean that. I'm learning more about you. This is really interesting. Uh, I'm glad that we kind of really crossed paths. You got to get us on, you got to get us on the Revere High School. You got to get the athletes to know who we are a little bit so we can start coming to do some events and cover some teams. Obviously, yourself, uh, Reggie Lewis Arena, track and field, you know, that's that's popping. What about some of the other teams in Revere here? I mean, I know football is playing really well in the fall. Is there any teams that we should be keeping an eye on? Any boys or girls teams that uh, compete or a bunch of dogs out there? Let's hear about it. 
mean, the soccer team, uh, it was pretty, pretty great. I mean, uh, they lost today in their semifinals or quarterfinals against Wakefield, but soccer every year is just an amazing run for them. Just they're, they're a great team. Football, we're, we're, they're, they're a young team. They're up and coming. They're, I think they're going to be great. Football, football next year and the years to come are going to be great. They're the basketball team. Basketball, basketball. I'll say the basketball team is pretty decent, pretty, pretty solid team. So we were overall, overall good school. Yeah, it sounds great. Competitive. Yeah, beat some good teams and yeah, anybody's just like tough teams, tough high school teams to play in general. Um, it's they're always the funnest teams to cover because you just know you're gonna get grittiness and toughness and any opponent that has to come in and play them. I'm sure is the gym rocking during hoop games. The gym is packed. Yeah, it's really, really packed. I mean, we try to. That, uh, one of our big things in the winter was we try to find the best high school gym. Like, what gym is like popping and packed and people going crazy? So um, maybe we'll have to stop by Revere High School. We'll have to see. Um, you have to I stop appreci- by the. Um, yeah, go ahead. Sorry, you have to stop by the Revere versus Winthrop game for football Thanksgiving. Is that a big one? Well, we 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 got Medford Mall, then that's kind of our big one. We cover. We actually this year are gonna be um like calling the game. Like we're gonna be calling it on the live stream and like and, and kind of doing that. So that's something kind of cool and different for us. But yeah, I mean Winthrop's a squad this year. Obviously Revere's a squad this year. So that's actually that's a pretty good game. That, that actually would be a pretty good game. I think this 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 year Revere just last year they lost and Winthrop like made dance videos about them. They made dance videos about us. They like were mocking us. So I think this year is very personal. Okay, so we got ourselves a little rivalry then here. Okay, I like that. I really like that. Well, listen, I'm so glad that you came on here today that we did cross paths. And I do mean that because, um, you know, we like I said, we never had a track and star field on here before. And I just remember so vividly our conversation, us meeting in the back of the end zone and chit-chatting. And um, so when you reached back out, I and you were like, I'm not sure if you remember. I re- I talked to the guy. I knew exactly who you were. I was like, and I messaged you right back. But you're like, nope, I know who you are. Let's do this. Like, I appreciate you reaching back out to me. Uh, and to learn about you and the adversity you have faced um, and to kind of led you to maybe pat the decisions that you made has been great. So uh, honestly, it was an honor having you on here today. And I really appreciate you taking the time, pal. Thank you. Yeah. So, uh, guys, we have a busy week this week. We're going to Friday night. We're going to be at Shawshank High School uh, Elite Eight. Um, I think they're playing Newburyport, uh, but we're there for coverage. We're super excited. It'll be a trip to the Final Four for those guys. They're 9-0. and And we also want to give a shout-out to our Neshoba Vikings, Danny Kelly and his squad, uh, also 9-0. and They have Cathedral coming to the house this week, a big game, second home playoff game for them. So uh, that place will be rocking for sure. And obviously the rest of the teams that are playing this week, making it to the Final Four is a big one, and that's the step before playing at Gillette Stadium. So, um, you know, this is going to be a great weekend of football, and we're excited. So our coverage will be crazy. And we're also going to be hosting, and we are so excited, the Brotherhood for the Fall. And I'm going to be emceeing the, their gala, their first ever gala event at the Cambridge Marriott this Saturday night. And we are excited. Beyond will be there. We'll be hosting. And uh, we are honored to be a part of such an amazing event. So it's very cool. So, Eunice, thank you for coming on here. Uh, I'm Anthony Petrellis from Beyond Podcast, guys. Till next time.